You know, one thing I want to do, I want to give praise to the Lord first of all, all things. Because I am nothing, but through him we can do all things. Well, thank you there, Pastor. The barefooted preacher. I'd be dad Jim. I never thought I'd say such. <laughs> he can pick, he can grin, he can play them ivory keys, and he can even walk and talk at the same time. So, y'all, he got it going on, fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's John Lance. I was raised a pastor's kid. The worst kind, like somebody just said in the audience. I got caught up in denominational theory about this denomination, that denomination, that denomination. First of all, I've talked to the father this morning. Hmm. Big Al, Big A, open us up in prayer. Amen. Well, first of all, y'all, before I go into my testimony, because that's what I'd go around, I, I work with seven different prison ministry teams, and we ride motorcycles into prisons all over the world. You were out in, where were y'all at, Sacramento last week, or, huh? Fresno. They were in Fresno last week and had 2,900-something decisions out there for Jesus Christ. I mean, we go in, we go fishing. But see what the good Lord's pressed on my heart is to make you fishermen and men before you leave here today. And y'all say, well, I ain't got a testimony like what you're going to be sharing. Yes, you do. You just ain't reached in your pocket and took it out. Now, God's got a plan today for each and every one in here. Because if you've told Satan to get out of your life, when you walk through the threshold, you walked into God's territory. And you're on holy ground now. And there's nothing of darkness can hurt us in here, y'all. There's nothing except your own fear, yourself. And that's self getting in my father's way. And it's displeasing to him. I've got a few scriptures before I go into my testimony because this is all going to wrap together what happened in my testimony. But this is something y'all were all handed a little track this morning. Pastor Scott, thank you so much for entrusting me with this podium. That's mighty awesome because I was a little bit more rigid about mine. <laughs> I wouldn't let somebody like me come in up here. <laughs> oh, just say it like it is. But anyway, what I've given everyone that's come in here today, and if you do not have one, we have someone that will be standing at the door to give you one as they leave today. These are just what do you thinks. It's a witnessing tool. It's, that's all it is. There's a bunch of movie stars and famous people on the back like Fran Tarkenton and such as that, people I run all over the world with. But God took me out of a prison, and when I got out of prison, I told him I'd do what he wanted me to do. I got out of prison, I kissed the ground. Anybody ever done that before? They saw him. I see some hands coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's some more. I said, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Anybody ever lied to the Lord other than me? I lied. I got out and I went back. I was about six months in church, shirt and tie and everything. I looked like a hillbilly pimp. But my God touched me. I didn't do what he wanted me to do, but I went through a lot of trials and tribulations as each and every one of you in here have done, just like that young man has gone through in his life. We've all gone through our own trials and tribulations. But we've got to look where our anchor is. Our ship might be tossed to and fro. Our sails might be battered, but the anchor will hold in spite of the storm. 
Now, the first words that I'm going to give you all day, if you all want to, you can follow along with me. I know it's going to be on the NIV up here, and i got a King James here, but, you know, God's Word is Word. I mean, there might be a little change, but it might be so somebody can comprehend getting it both ways. You know, because God is alive and well. But what he's told me to go into and on today, I'm a, this man worked real hard to make this. Hang on one second, preacher. Big old Jim clip up here on I'll be dad, Jim. It worked. <laughs> it's holding on by a little tether. Anybody ever held on to life by a little tether? Well, that's what it's holding on to right now. If y'all will, turn in your scripture, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And if you go to verse 12. And I've, I've got it on the wall up here, so I'm going to read it from the wall right here because it's got a lot more light. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. It didn't say you might do. It says will do. He will do every, even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Now, I'm going to read another translation so y'all really understand that. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do greater works. You hear that? Greater works? Greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything, y'all hear that? Anything. If you ask anything whatsoever you ask in my name, so that the Son of God may bring glory to the Father. It says right here in the King James, it says, And whatsoever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do. Do it. That's anything. That's anything, y'all. That's any need you got. There ain't no reason to walk around toting your luggage with you. Because God is the one who will take that luggage away from you. You just got to step back and get out of his dead gym way. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. I'm just going to stick to one. I don't want to mess with people's heads. So. Because some of y'all might get pickled like I do sometimes. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Here's the key. And you will, see that will, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and flip that next one. The promise is for you and your children and all who are far off from all who the Lord our God will call. Well, see, each and every one of you have been called. Because you've asked Jesus into your life, then you have made an obligation to be a servant. And the only way you can be a servant is to be a disciple. The only way to be a disciple is to be a warrior. The only way to be a warrior is to have the tools of God's Word in your heart so you can take and spread manna over the universe. Whew. That's good stuff, guys. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Boy, don't that fit the world now. Come on. Do I get an amen in here? Is that the best? I'm going to tell you, this world's corrupt. That's why God is rising up people like these bikers and prison evangelists and everything else to go to the least likely. He wants us all hit to give his free anointing of the gift of the spirits. Can you 
I said, hey, man, that ain't for me, man. You know, it's so much stuff that dog going to hunt where I come from. For those who accept his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayer. God did all that. But when he sent his son to die on that cross, that bridge the gap between heaven and earth to save a sinner like me. Now, if you will, turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to the rest of it. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Don't ye haw with it. Don't go along with it. Somebody's got babbling lips. Back away from them. They say, man, what you walking up for? Man, it's just tainting my ear a little bit, you know. I got to back up a little bit. Just get yourself, excuse yourself out of it, or let the Holy Ghost use you to bring glory to the Father's name. That's what I choose you to do. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted one to another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Get yourself out of God's way because he don't need your help. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual favor. Serving the Lord. Y'all know about that salt? It loses favor. It's been trampled on. You are the salt of the world. You are the light. You're representing my Father. Be joyful in hope. Be patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who are persecute you. Y'all, if I could take off my shirt, I could show you all kinds of scars from knives stuck in my back. But you know what? It's nothing. Look what Jesus did at Calvary. Bless those who persecute you, and bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. I'm going to tell you, I just saw that going to play in my own household when my mother died four weeks ago. I had a sister who was getting greedy. But you know what? I told my other sister, don't worry about it. God's got this handle. And you know what? She's been calling me crying all weekend. Yeah, brother, it's going to cost me this. Well, you ripped us off, and God said, vengeance is mine. That's all I got to say. Do not, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, I've done read that one. Is that the end? Okay, well, so I'm used to doing it out of this thing over here, so I just have to look to you. Is that the end? Thank you, man. But, you know, I'm going to tell you something. She don't have this one up there because I didn't give her this one. But he just gave it to me, so I'm going to give it to y'all. This is out of Ephesians 4. Now, to him that is able... To do exceedingly abundantly above all what we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be the, be the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without an end. God is in the healing business. He also said that he wanted to give us gifts. And I'm going to shut this word right now because I'm going to let him just take over and do his thing. I get in his way a lot of times, like we all do. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you God's gifts that he wants to give each and every one of you today 
is the gift of evangelism, the gift of discipleship. And you can't walk around and ask Jesus to come in your life and come in here one day a week and sit on your tush and think you're playing church. That ain't going to work. That ain't what God's looking for. He's looking for warriors. He ain't looking for no more sidewalk sissies. He's got them all across the world playing a game. They turn around, they judge, and people like us that have had a past. You know, somebody told me, you defile the temple of body of God with all these tattoos on your body. Excuse me? The Old Testament says, do not defile the temple of body of God. But in Revelation chapter 19, verse 16, it says, and he had on his vesture. What's on my vesture? What does it say? Come on, preacher. All right? And on his thigh, he had a name written. W-R-I-T-T-E-N, according to the word. Right, Pastor? And it, on his thigh, he had king of king and lord of lords. So, my God, that, my Jesus had a tattoo. See, I walk into prison yards all over the world, and thank God I've been used in 738 prisons around the world. My brother Eric got a piece of it. How wonderful was it to be a part of that magnitude out in California a few weeks ago? Why did this cup filling and overrunning just make you jump? Get high? I mean, it's better than any dope I've ever popped in my veins. It's better than anything I've ever drunk. And we made some good shine over there in them North Carolina, North Georgia mountains. Now, I'm here to tell you. Believe me, I know it was good. Right there is proof. I mean, that's the only plastic thing about this old man up here you're going to see today is these store-bought teeth I got in my head. And I've got an appointment to get some new one. Ain't that right, Michael? Come on. But, you know, my God, he said, I'm going to take you and put you back in prison. I said, what? But, see, he's giving us gifts. And let me explain to you about the gifts. The word that we just read said greater than who? That's right. Even greater than the disciples did. He has given us those gifts. I was talking to a young lady this morning. The Holy Spirit got all over me at breakfast, and my breakfast got hard as a brick. But the God was moving. And he said, use those gifts. When your palm your hand starts getting sweaty, put the hands on and have the faith to pray it, believe it, and receive it. That's what God wants us all to do. But this is what it took to get me to this point I am today. Okay, I'm going to ask everybody. <coughs> Buckle your seatbelt. Put your shoulder harnesses on because we're going down a ride. That's straight. I can't drink water. I only have a half of a heart. I'm a Vietnam era veteran. And I'm thankful to be alive. I've only had 42 beats to my heart for the last 10 years, but something happened here about a year ago, and I'm up to 59 beats a minute now in my heart. He's restoring it. He's, he's gives me strength. I told the lady if I pass out up here, I said, my nitro's in my right front pocket. Just give me a squirt because I, I can't take the pills. They don't do me no good. And my brother, little John, he'll tell you, I can't even drink water. That's why I've got this thing here. Water will come out like foam. But you know what? I don't care because he uses me. Okay. Y'all got your seatbelts on? That's, that's awful weak. I only heard one person buckled up. I don't want to get the ticket. I like these handlebars right here. Thank you, brother. Thank you. They gave me thumbs up. <laughs> it's some brotherhood. Ladies and gentlemen, my name's John Lance. I was raised a pastor's kid, and this is what I share all over the world that God has given me my testimony, and each one of you have a testimony. All you got to do is reach down there and ask the Lord to let you use it. You say, well, my name is bad or powerful as yours. Excuse me. There ain't nobody no powerful than what Jesus did at Calvary, so ours don't mean diddle. It's just what he let us walk through to get to his side. Now, as I said, I was raised a pastor's kid. 
My first marriage, I'm going to be straight up with you. It went up and smoked like chicken tongue, that big old Labrador and Blunt they were smoking. That was my first marriage. <laughs> up and smoked. But what God did, he blessed my young little filly. And she's done me real good, and we've been together for 28 years now. We had two sons. June 29, 1998, I had to make a choice. June 29, 1998, I took a hose like this right here. I had a boy with a bad heart due to Agent Orange, which I got. I didn't know then in 1998, but I reached down and I took this hose and I did like this. And I pulled it out of my son's lungs and I held him up in my hands. I said, Lord, let your will be done. Ladies and gentlemen, I was burning the gates of hell wide open when I said that. I was burning the gates of hell wide open. I was in the fiery pit. I'd heard my daddy say it because my daddy was a preacher. So I said, Lord, let your will be done. And exactly one hour later, at 6.35 in the evening, when the little hand, 6.30 in the evening, when the little hand hit on the, on the six mark, my son died that night. And I got mad at a man named Jesus. Because I'd prayed to him for a year, and there's some of you in here right now that have been praying for God to work miracles and you ain't had your prayers answered yet, I want to know who's man or lady enough to raise their hand right now and say, my prayers ain't all been answered yet. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Throw them up there. Because he said, I'm going to meet your needs today. I'm going to meet all your needs according to my riches and glory. He said, through me you can do all things. I prove to you in my word that the gifts are freely given. All you got to do is plug into them. And he's going to give them today. Who wants to receive everything God can give you today? Come on. Let him know. Tell him, say, I want everything you got for me today. After my son died, I was so angry at God, I didn't want nothing to do with him no more. Anybody ever felt like that? Sure enough, I did. Well, I'm going to tell you what. After I buried my son, y'all, I cursed God for everything it was worth. But my wife... She didn't know nothing about God. See, I was a pre-ministerial major in college, too. But I walked away from it. But what happened that day in my life, I cried out to God with my son for one year. My prayer, I felt, wasn't answered because he died. I said, Lord, I'm done with you. I don't want nothing else to do with you. You ain't ever answered a prayer for me. Well, we promised my son his name was Jeremy. We promised Jeremy we would never drink or do drugs again. Anybody ever lied to you, kid, other than me? <laughs> I see some hands popping up, some heads bobbing. Well, that was me. I lied. Six months later, me being a finance man, I was general manager of Classic Cadillac in Atlanta, Georgia. I was making over $200,000 a year, and God told me to quit the job and go work for him. I said, man, I need to smoke some stuff out of your bag, dog. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, if you want me to quit this job at the Cadillac dealership and go work for you, I, I got too many houses to pay for and toys to pay for. He said, that's a, the earth. He said, I want you to sell all of it and go to work for me. I said, <laughs> I said, once again, I need to do a line out of your bag this time, dog. But anyway, God took me. My wife, she said she went to work that day. When she went to work, she was at a car dealership, and she said she went to the restroom, and she said she heard a voice. I said, yeah, if somebody looking through the peephole out of the shop back there, baby. She said, no, baby. She said, this is an angelical voice. I said, well, what does an angelical voice sound like? I was making fun of her. She turned around. She said, baby, she said, the angel told me if I wanted to know where my son went, you had to take me to church so I knew something because you were raised in this. Your daddy was a preacher. You went to college, studied theology and history, 
and you walked away from it for whatever reason, I don't know. But this is what I want you to do. She said, I want you to take me to church. I said, what? I said, I ain't going to be around them bunch of hypocrites and bigots. I said, just get the TV on. You can watch one of them. She does like this with her arms. I said, what does that mean? She said, these hands ain't cooking for you. You can read the rest of the story. I said, yes, ma'am. So I said, baby, put the boy in the back of the, in the Corvette and we'll run down. And I wanted to go to the biggest church in town because I had all the Oscar, Randy, Chris, Dior. I was a hillbilly pimp. And I wanted to go to the biggest and the best. You know what? Went down the hill. I probably cussed about 150 times in about a mile because I didn't want to go. But I walked in there to a church just like this. 1999. Just like this, Pastor Scott, what you and Susie got going on here. I walked into a church just like this, and the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. And when he did, he said, John, I'm going to take you places you've never been. I said, no, not me. Ladies and gentlemen, we're sitting in that church, and the preacher said, how many families, husbands, are workaholics? Well, my wife had never been in church before, and that deacon carried us to about where you're sitting, Tracy. He said, third row. I needed a I really needed my windshield to keep the spit from coming at me from the preacher. You know, I, I, I almost romped my windshield off the motorcycle, you know. Because I've seen them get fired up like that and get walking and talking, spit flying and everything. But anyway, the Holy Spirit said, go spend quality time with your family. Ladies and gentlemen, me and my wife, we went up, and I said, all right, I'm going to take you up to, I said, where do you want to go? She said, I want to go camping in the National Forest. I said, baby, we live in the Great Smoky Mountains. I mean, what the heck? I said, all right, go set the tent up over the rental properties over there. Go set the tent up. Once you have the tent set up, I said, I'll come out after the race is over. She said, no. She said, I'm going to go to head the river. Well, y'all, I went up in the Smokies a little bit further, deeper into the mountains, and it was about making a long story short. I'm going to wrap this up pretty tight here. God turned around, and he told me when I came down, I all I wanted to do, y'all, when I was running with the clubs, things I did with a club, I remember getting behind a 51 pan head. And <laughs> you know, I thought I was smart using that engine block down here. But there was a gas tank sitting right here. You talking about riding a short bus? We all rode the short bus that day. But what happened when I went out to the National Forest, I carried my other boy with me. And I I said, son, daddy's going to follow the trout truck down the road. And I'm going to throw out a piece of survey tape. And when I, you get to the blacktop down the foot of the mountain, six and a half miles, I'll pick you up in the truck and bring you back up here to the campsite. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what happened that day changed my life forever. I come down the foot of the mountain, I was following that trout truck. You know how the law, some of you dogs know what I'm talking about, how the law be tagging us years back in our past. And some of you got tagged coming back from the ride yet last night. I ain't calling your names out, but anyway. Whoop. Anyway, as I was up there in the National Forest following that trout truck down the road, when I used to run with Clubhouse, I was stealing 18 wheeler loads of gas. It was no big deal for me because I knew how to do it. <laughs> and if you needed a new bike and you run the walkie-talkie, so we had walk we didn't have cell phones back then. If you were in one walkie-talkie, you ran the other, and y'all kept me safe in the middle, y'all got a new bike next day. You know, it's free of charge. Y'all just have to be my runners, front door and back door. But God took me out of all that. And when she, the Lord spoke to her that day, I went to the National Forest with my son. And he was following me down. He said, Dad, can I ride my bicycle down the mountain? Well, I forgot to tell y'all, I ran on the pro circuit with motorcycles back in the 60s. Team Husqvarna, flat tracking for Triumph. And God took that and put all this together and made me what he is today. 
But to him be all praise, honor, and glory. But what happened that day, gentlemen and ladies and young people in here? I done gave up my faith in a man named Jesus Christ. But I carried the church, and I did what the preacher said, go spend quality time with your family. And I did just that. I went and spent quality time with my family. And when I went and talked, I went up there, and, and as I followed the trout truck down the road, my boy said, Daddy, can I ride my bicycle six and a half miles down the foot of the mountain? I said, that's where I'll pick you up and take you back up there. And as I picked, went down there to pick my son up, another kid showed up on a green bicycle. Sir, sir, you got a boy riding a red bicycle? Sure do. He said, well, sir, he hit a pothole and did a wheelie. I was 1969, Georgia wheelie champion. I said, that's my boy. All right. I said, he said, but he front tire came off and the porch went to the ground and bam, he had a granite face wall. This is my second son. I said, where's he at? He said, he's laying in the middle of the road. I said, tell him to get his butt up on the road with some of these Floridians run over him. Guess what? He said, sir, my daddy said, your boy's dead. This is my second son. Y'all, I was raised in a denomination that didn't believe little of what that word says. And I'd had it held back for me all of my life what the living truth of God was. But what happened that day when I threw that truck in reverse, and if you've ever been on them old logging roads and backed up, and I was in old hog leg truck, if y'all don't know what that is, it means I had a gear shifter. And I threw that thing in reverse, and I backed up that old logging road along the creek because I couldn't turn around. I got up there, and I found my second boy lying in a puddle of blood just covered. I cried out. I said, where are you at, God? I was hollering at the top of my lungs like I am right now without nobody. Where are you at, God? I need real help today. And I kept screaming. Ain't y'all ever screamed to God and ain't heard nothing? Come on, throw your hand up right now. I screamed out to him. I said, God, no, I can't handle this. This is all I got left. Where are you at? I'm right here where you left me. Man, I ain't done no dope. Where's this crap coming from? Man, I just heard something. No, man, this is all I got left. Put your hands on, pray, believe, and receive my son, Jesus' name. I did that crap before, and my son died. My wife's had a stroke at 34 years old. I said, what am I even doing talking to you? And turn around and say what he told me to say. He said, you put your hands on, you start praying over that boy, and I'm going to give you gifts. He said, I'm going to restore you to a man that is going to move the nation and rise people up for the occasion to bring glory to my name. He said, I freely give him gifts of hands on. I've given him a gift of interpretation of dream. I've given you the gifts of being able to speak life into someone. I've given you authority over Satan with the tip of my tongue. All you got to do is exercise it and have faith to believe it. I'm going to tell you what, y'all. I got down on my little boy. He was in a puddle of blood, and I got down, and I started praying, and all of a sudden, she cut it a moki. I shot it at a moki. Cut it at a. Words come out of my mouth I'd never spoke in my life. And I don't know to this day what was said. But I know my God does. And what he did, he told me, everybody you come in contact, everyone you come in contact with, you tell them, I got him in my hands. Ladies and gentlemen, a man from Chicago jumped in the truck and drove me and my son. And all I know, I was speaking in tongues all the way to the ambulance. From where my son was in the National Forest, it took us about 38 minutes to get or a little bit more longer, about 50 minutes to get to the ambulance. They pronounced him DOA. Got down, going to the hospital. I was cursing the man because he wouldn't cut the ambulance. Sorry, ain't on the lights. He said he's dead, man. 
I said, let me tell you something. I got an argument with a man named God, and he said he got him in his hands. Now, you shut up and do your job. And I reached around his arm, and I put him in check. Some of y'all know what that is. I said, cut your lights on and drive this dad Jim thing, son. Or I'm fixing to stomp you like a kid does a bud puddle till all the water comes out of it. And he put the gas down then. We got down that hospital, ladies and gentlemen, and I asked the Holy Spirit to touch you right now and let you feel what I feel because he turned around as they opened the ambulance doors. A major gush of wind went, and the heart started going, boom, 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 boom. I jumped out just like the day I got out of prison. I jumped out there. I kissed that ground. I said, thank you, Lord. He said, you done that when I let you out of prison. He said, I got a calling for you. I want you to go get the least likely because I'm coming real soon. As we carried him in the hospital, my wife walked by, didn't even recognize him. His lip was below his Adam's apple. His face was ground up like sausage in a sausage grinder. They turned around, took that boy of mine, they took him in the hospital, and they did these x-rays. And they told me Monday to take him back to the specialist. They're going to put six pins in his jaw, wire ten teeth shut, and three plastic surgeries. <laughs> Doctor t did an x-ray. I said, look, man, I went to the hospital and got these x-rays. You ain't going to run my bill up. I done lost one kid, and y'all just game and made for money. I said, just do your job. They said, I'm taking another x-ray. I said, I ain't paying for it. They said, I ain't seen nothing like this. He took another x-ray. Then he went and took another one. He said, I'm taking another one now. I said, it's your dime, baby. It's your dime. And what happened right then? God showed up and showed out. The x-rays, everybody's seen the x-ray screen. Y'all know what they look like, right? All right, the first one, six broke bones, four broke bones, two broke bones, no broke bones. I've been working for a man named Jesus ever since. God is in the healing business. He's in the healer in the house today because his blood runs from Emmanuel's veins into mine. And if you want what I got today, if you want gifts of being able to talk into someone's life, it ain't me. It's God. These gifts are freely given as the word I read said. It's freely given. But he said so many people are scared to get out of their comfort zone. Let me tell you what. He's got people all over America doing this. Try la la boom day. Try la la boom day. I shot my dog today. And people just sitting around, people. And that's not what God called us to do. That's why y'all got a little track with y'all. But see, God turned around, breathed life into him, healed six broke bones, no plastic surgeries, and I quit my job. I have not drawn a paycheck since 2005, and God has blessed me to be financially debt-free. I walk by faith, not by sight, by the Spirit, said, Lord. He said, I will meet all your needs according to my riches and glory. He don't need your help. Some of y'all been trying to micromanage God. He don't need your help. He said, get out of my way and let me you. Let me do you. Let me use you. He wants you young people to go back in. Reason why y'all got this, what do you think? God said, make disciples in here today. He said, make disciples out of my people to go to the highways and the hedges and compel them unto me. They ain't got to have a cut on their back. They ain't got to do nothing but have the love of Jesus Christ in their soul. And he said, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Oh, you going to go through some trials, temptations. My daughter-in-law just got locked up for, I mean, uh, last week, wasn't it? For drugs and bait in her system. You know, don't think I don't go through it still. But you know what? I know who's going to see me through the storm because my anchor holds in spite of the storm. Do you know who's going to see you through there? Because, say, y'all, some of us had a coach in our life. 
How many of y'all have ever played any kind of sport and had a coach? I'll tell you, do y'all have good coaches or bad coaches? Both, ain't there? Good and bad, right? Well, see, a lot of y'all need new coaches today. You've been trying to help the coach coach the team. I'm here to tell you, my daddy don't need your help at all. He's already got a plan for you. He knows what your next breath's going to be. He knows when you're going to check out of here. Just like four weeks ago, my mama went to be with him. Four weeks ago this Sunday. And I'm honored because I know where she sits. But you know what? God said, I want to make you fishermen of men. He said, those disciples, they, he even told them everything that he was going to do in this world. He told them that he was going to go die and he was going to raise on the third day. But were they like us? Were they like the rest of the congregation? Didn't have ears to hear or mind to perceive the mysteries of his word. You study to show yourself to prove, and God will put the word right in front of you. He'll give you the word in the tower, in the time, and the hour of need to be able to reach down to the gates of hell and pluck anybody out if you've got enough faith to ask for it. But that's our job on this earth. It's not to be going home, well, that was a good service today. That guy was real fruity. You know, he's like a box of Fruit Loops. He just didn't know what flavor to jump back in with. You know, but uh, now that ain't what it's about. What I want you to do is I want everybody to hold this right here, right now, in their hand. I'm just going to tell you, I ain't going to read it all to you because I think some of y'all educated enough, you might be able to do it yourself. If you ain't, get somebody to help you. If you don't have one, hold your hand up. Got a bunch of them, little John. On, whoa, big group over here. Get on the left side, John. You got a lot to pass out. Right side. <laughs> I don't care. They'll send me more. I've also included a prison schedule. If anybody wants to step out of their comfort zone and go into evangelism, and if you can witness to somebody inside of a prison, you can go witness to the telephone pole out there. I'm going to tell you. You can talk to the mailbox, and I'm going to tell you. But it, they're just, there's a schedule I've given everyone. It might be something in your state and your area. That's Bill Glass. He played with the Cleveland Browns. Him and Billy Graham worked together in the Billy Graham Crusades in the 60s. And that's who I've been working for the last 20 years. That's just one of the seven ministries I speak for in prisons around the world. And me, my rap sheet's still on paper. Ain't nothing been expunged except by God. And he's took care of it all. Now, what I'm going to do, God said, make disciples out of my people today. Don't worry about all the fancy accolades back here, Scott Fran Tarkin and all these pictures. That's just something to give them as a remembering. But what it is, it says, what do you think? And then you flip it over and it says, may I ask you some questions? Is there a heaven or hell? Where will you go when you die? Do you have a spiritual belief? Who is Jesus Christ to you? And there is no wrong answer on any of this. Why would God let you in this heaven? Would you like to know if what you believe is true or not? Well, see, God turned around, and then you flip it over, and it says, God's word, the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. Because, see, we're having to explain to people because there's a generation X out there that don't know who God is. They don't know who Jesus is. So you got God the Father, Jesus the Son. you got to break it down. And, y'all, if we don't get a hold of these young people right now, there's such a gap in between there right now that we're going to lose. But my Bible says we win. But the world, if you listen to CNN, I'm not picking on TV network, but yeah, I am. And if you listen to my store-bought preachers, mm, I ain't, oh, I'm going to stay away from that. Y'all preaching churches out in Texas where I've accidentally touched a pole and says, look to the left and smile or fix and take up offering. Look to the left, center, right. Right center. These churches hold 10, 15, 20,000 people. Sermons prepared by seven theologians, seminaries, directors. Pastor don't even do his own work, preacher Scott. <laughs> and they throw out these store bought messages. But I'm going to tell you, my God wants to heal some people today. I've already asked where the anointing oil is. And I know I'm not doing it, Pastor Scott and his wife are to do it, his wife's to do the ladies. 
and he's to do to men. I already know this has been orchestrated because God told me so. But there's some people in here that's been carrying their luggage around, and they need a new manager. They need a new coach. The coach they got ain't getting the job done. They need a new manager in their life today. And God says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to Father except through me. But he wants you to be the tree of life. And if you ain't producing fruit, you ain't getting diddle done. So you might as well go and join that group that was sitting there on their tush with a finger playing a game called church. Because this church is alive. Praise team, I enjoyed y'all. Young buck that stood up here barefooted. You wore me out, man. I had to go back and get some air after you jumping so much. This church is alive. The flag core. Everything I've seen displayed in here today is of the Holy Spirit. And it's what the word calls for. And I'm honored to be here today. I am so honored. But I know my father's here right now. And he says, y'all got some burdens that y'all are toting. Even, even some of y'all patched in members. He said, hey, man. He said, even my disciples, when I asked them to come pray with me on that hill that night, he said, what did they do? They went to sleep. They were tired. I'm going to ask you today, are you tired? Or do you want my father to use you? Are you sick and tired of having a bad coach in your life? Are you sick and tired of the manager you got in your life? You know, you got a boss at work, and they manager, some of them are good and some of them are bad. But I'm going to tell you what, if you sign up with Jesus Christ today, you got the best in the world. You're guaranteed victory all the way to the end. You're guaranteed victory. And he also said, I freely give my gifts. Now, today is emphasis on the gifts is what he's telling me. He said some people, their palms are getting sweaty. And he says, they, I'm touching them right now. He said, I'm touching that person right now with the palms that are sweaty. And he said, come on down. Now, I, this altar is open at any time right now because I'm going to tell you what God's got planned today. He said, "There's." He said, I'm going to meet your needs. If you want a gift, if you want gifts of hands-on, you want gift interpretation, you want any of the gifts, he said, I'm freely giving them out today. All you got to do is come plug in to me. And he said, I'm going to give you a joke better than any 240. Ain't nobody going to knock you over the head. Ain't nobody going to slap you. He said, just come to me, ye that are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest today. If you got burdens you've been toting, you got stuff going on at home, just like that young lady with that young baby up here, praise God for that little man. But right now, Lord, I just want to take the opportunity to dedicate that baby to you right now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you keep angels of mercy about that little two-week-old baby, and you'll abort Satan's mission on mom and dad and that baby's life back to the gates of hell. I got authority over Satan, and I'm practicing it right now in Jesus' name. It is done. Now, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to ask you to bow your head. I ain't found it nowhere in the Bible. It says bow your head or shut your eyes, but I'm going to just ask that out of courtesy. Mm -hmm. 